Incident IO Response makes running your incident process effortless. The product comes fully configured, but we know customization to fit how you work is important. From choosing the metadata you attach to incidents with custom fields, like affected teams and services, through to configuring the stages you want an incident to progress through. Like what do we call the stage where we're debugging and not yet sure what's going on? We even let you configure the information you want to collect when incidents are manually declared. Like maybe we want to ask people to provide a summary before they think about the severity, or maybe not. Another big part of incident IO response is workflows. These let you automate large parts of your incident process. We can choose when they're run based on triggers like an incident changing state or a message arriving in the channel. Let's set up a workflow to remind responders to update the status page when the incident is major or above. We start with a filter to only include incidents with at least major severity, as you can see here. And now we choose from the library of actions we can take here. We call these workflow steps. We're going to use this one to prompt for a status page update. We'll customize the message that'll be posted in the incident channel. And that's it. Our incident workflow is done. Let's go put it to the test. A key part of Incident IO is the ability to run an incident right from Slack. To report a new incident, we use Slash Inc. And that opens the report screen you see here. By default, everything here is optional. We've added affected services, and since this issue is related to login, we'll select this service here. As you can see, Incident IO has created a new Slack channel to use for our response. We have a number of helpful actions at our fingertips. Let's set ourselves as the incident lead and let the channel know what's going on. Within a channel slash ink is how we take actions related to this incident. We're going to use it to escalate via incident IO on call. We just need to type or select what we want to do. And you'll see we show shortcuts for how to jump straight here next time. To escalate, we just need to pick the team or user we need to get hold of. And we can provide a short message to them here that'll be included when they're paged. Look at that, live status shared right here in the channel. Slash Inc. Update is the shortcut for providing an internal status update. This will be shared on any internal status pages and also broadcast to anyone who's subscribed to updates. We're going to bump this up to major severity as it seems pretty bad. And we'll drop a message in the update to explain why. And would you look at that? That workflow we configured earlier? It's just reminded me to update our public status page. Let's go do that now. With Incident IO, you don't need to leave Slack at all. We let you configure all of your public comms here including detailed updates on any specific impact. We'll update the app to say it's in a degraded state right now. And before we push anything live, we get to review it right here. And that's it. We've updated the outside world about what's going on here. Back to the incident and we've figured out what the problem is here. Our authentication pods are overloaded. Let's go and provide another update to let everyone know. We'll update the status to fixing and update the message too. Look at that, Incident IO has responded to the update. This is an AI-powered summary suggestion. We're constantly scanning the incident, and when we have a suggestion, we'll ask you about it like this. Right, it looks like we're out of the woods here. Let's close this out and move into what happens after the incident is mitigated. We do that with slash ink close, and we're presented with a screen like this. We can regenerate the summary using our AI engine here as well as updating any other fields or data about the incident. At this point, we can close the incident or decide to follow what we call the post-incident flow. This is a set of customizable steps people need to follow before fully closing the incident. We'll pause here and dive into those steps in the dashboard. Here's the post-incident flow in the dashboard. It's essentially a checklist of things like reviewing the timeline, scheduling a debrief meeting, and writing a post-mortem. It's all customizable, so you can have folks follow your own process. Let's skip forward a little to writing your postmortem document. You can choose to export to an external tool like Google Docs, Notion, or Confluence, or write them in the app like this. You can see we have the full timeline here, which can be edited and commented on to give a rich picture of what happened. We're using a contributors, mitigators, and risks format, but you can use whatever template you like here. Finally, we make it easy to create and keep track of actions right from this page. When we save, it's automatically exported to Linear. And of course, this works for Jira and other issue trackers too. And that's it. A fully configured incident response platform and an end-to-end -end incident too. Incident IO on call has everything you need to create your first on-call setup. To start, let's create our first schedule. First up, we'll give it a name. Core team is what we're using here. We have public holiday feeds within the app, so it's easy to manage schedules and overrides. 
You can see here that we've added Thanksgiving. If we wanted to change who's on call here, an override is just a click away. Now we'll add our responders. These are the people who will be added to the on-call rotation. With Incident IO, you can configure multiple people to be on call at once for pair on call or setting up shadow rotations. And you can control things like change over days, rotation length, and specific times when folks are on call too. And that's our on-call schedule, done. Now we need to decide how paging escalations should reach people. We call these escalation paths. There's a lot of flexibility here, so we'll set up a slightly more complex escalation path to demonstrate. We're going to configure this one to send notifications to Slack during working hours, so escalations can be handled by the team as a whole. Outside of working hours, we'll escalate to whoever is on the on-call schedule. We have plenty of options to suit your team here. Things like round robin so we can iterate through the available on-callers, for example. In case they're not available, we'll add the team's manager as a second line. And that's our team's escalation path, done. The final piece of the on-call puzzle is alerts. This is how you configure your external alerting systems like Datadog, Grafana, and Prometheus to send us events. For simplicity, we're going to set up an HTTP source here. We've sent a test alert, which we'll see arrive here shortly. And there it is. We want to make alerts as easy to understand as possible, so we can configure rules to pull clean data from the messy JSON payload. Incident IO's AI has already scanned the payload and suggested attributes we might want to pull out, along with the correct JavaScript syntax. You can see here we're parsing team and service into alert attributes. What's even better is that it's mapping these to entries in Incident IO's catalog. But that's a story for another day. With our new alert source set up, we need to decide what we want to do when a new alert arrives, like paging people and creating incidents. First, we choose the alert sources we want to connect to this route. Next, we can apply filters so only some alerts get processed. We choose which escalation path should be used to notify an on-caller. In this case, we're using the team linked in the alert to dynamically find the right escalation path. It looks a little complex, but with team set up in the product, it's very straightforward. Now the exciting part. We can create incidents so there's a Slack channel and everything else you need to respond at speed, done for you automatically. We allow multiple alerts to map to a single incident and let you choose how things are grouped. Here, we're grouping by time window and team. And last up, we can customize how incidents are created. Here, we're pulling the alert description and using it as the default incident summary. Here's how it'll look. Pretty cool, right? Finally, we can choose to stream all of our alerts into Slack. And we'll attach buttons to the messages we send so you can turn an alert into an incident super easily. And that's it. Schedules, escalation paths, alert sources, and alert routes. A full on-call setup, perfect for startups, done in a little over three minutes. Incident IO status pages are a perfect way to keep your customers in the loop. We have a few types to choose from. Public pages that everyone can see, private ones for specific customers, and internal pages just for your company. Let's create a simple public page. First, we give it a title. This will normally be your company or product name. Now let's customize the look and feel. You can choose between light and dark mode and add your logos and branding. Let's add our logo and icon here. That's looking pretty great. So let's move on to configure the content of the page. We can add components to pages, these are features or areas of the product we want to communicate the status of. And for each component, we can choose to show combinations of uptime and visual bars, depending on your preference, along with options like whether we want to show historical uptime. And with that, we're done. Let's go take a look at our page. Call me biased, but I think that's looking pretty great. With our status page and on-call setup in Incident IO, we can configure automatic alerts when there's a sudden spike in views. This could mean your customers are seeing problems you aren't yet aware of. To do this, we configure an alert route with status page views as the source. There's no need to do any other filtering here, so we'll stick with the default. And just like other alert routes, we can choose to escalate, create incidents, or just forward the alerts to a Slack channel. For now, let's just send these alerts to the alerts channel so they can be dealt with there. And that's it. Your new status page, beautifully branded to match your company, and with automated alerts if traffic spikes. All in under two minutes.